All right, guys, I got the MN 128 Jeep Wrangler hard body here, and I'm going to do some upgrades to this thing. I already done the upgrades to the open top MN 128 Jeep Wrangler, so now it's time to add some accessories slash upgrades to it. So here we are on the bench, ready to do it. So what do we have in store for this Jeep today? Stay tuned, you will see. So today we got some goodies here to add to the MN128 hard body or hard top, I should say. Uh, so today we're going to add these metal beadlock wheels. Uh, they are 90 millimeters in diameter and 35 millimeters in width. Uh, they only weigh about 132 grams. Uh, so... We're gonna add this. We're gonna add a little weight to the bottom, but also just for the looks as well. I like the way these wheels actually look. So on this Jeep, black on gray. Uh, but with these wheels, we need to add a little stability because the uh, the stock shocks won't get it. They won't get it. Uh, so we're gonna add these oil field threaded shocks that should help stabilize the suspension a little bit with these uh, heavier wheels also we're going to add these metal dry shafts here uh, just for stability and longevity here. with all this metal components going on uh, just want to give it just some, uh, you know, durability, should I say. Not stability, but more durable. So we're going to put these on here. Uh, the only thing about these wheels, I think in the front, I may have to trim the a little bit of this bottom of the wheel where it is fender. Uh, just so when it turns, uh, the tread is not rubbing up against it, but we're going to find out. I'm thinking uh, that's what I'm going to have to do. Now, the, the metal B-lock wheels I put on the black MN128 open top, they're a little bit bigger than this. They are 96 millimeters in diameter. And so I decided to go with these smaller ones, 90 uh, millimeters. So I wouldn't... So I wouldn't have to cut, but I don't know. I may still have to cut because, like I said, these are much bigger than the stock wheel so but they are better better tread and uh should help this jeep out so let me get started and put these on i mean i've already had a video a few times now of taking the hard body off taking this body off and gaining access to electronics and shocks and all that so i won't put y'all through that grueling uh or that torment anymore so i'm gonna go ahead and get the body off and then i'll come back so as you see i got the body off now i'm about to take the stock friction shocks off replace those and then once we do that then i'm gonna go ahead and swap these dry shafts out and uh then we'll be ready to go throw the wheels on and uh see how it goes from there one thing i like about these b-lock wheels here the light on so you can see it will help so one thing i like about these wheels here these wheels actually eliminates the hex here so you don't have to use the hex to come on the ma128 with these b-lock wheels it already has that notch uh for the pin embedded in the back spacing of the rim so 
So it eliminates the hex. And you can just slap this wheel on there with the pin. So, all right, let me go ahead and get this swapped out, which like I said, I've done a video on this before with the black open top MN128. So I won't do it again. I just really want to get on here and uh, swap this out and then just show you how it looks. And uh, we're going to go from there. I'll see y'all in here in a minute. All right, so to access this drive shaft at the top here, which I've already done here, uh, you do have to take the gearbox off. So you will have to dis, you will have to remove that so you can gain access to the screw. Gain access to that screw there. And in the bottom half of this drive shaft, you can gain access from the bottom. Same for this third one here. You have to remove this ESC here, this ESC board, to gain the top part of the second shaft, or should I say the third shaft. And then you can gain access to the screw on this bottom half here. The easiest one to take off is the short one, which I call it the second one. It's this short one. So, so let me get the second one button back up and actually let me go ahead and do this third one at the bottom. So I'm going to remove this ESC here. Uh, and basically all it is with this ESC is only held by these, let's see if you can see them, the little white tabs here. There's two white tabs with the white tab over here as well. You push those. Push it in, lift it up, push the other one, lift it up. Sometimes you might have to use something to get in there to pry it if your fingers are not small enough to get it. To make sure you don't damage uh, any of the uh, connectors there. But that's that. Got that one. And I got a lot of uh, electrical grease here on this board. That's why it looked kind of shiny and sticky or whatnot but that kind of helps keep it waterproof a little bit along with the uh clear fingernail clear fingernail polish all right so i removed that esc and now uh, let's see if you can see it here turn the wheel turn the wheel until you can get to the screw. There's the screw. Uh, you can see it there. So that's how you get that. Move the ESC board out the way. And get to that screw. And you'll be in business. Now another way you could have gained access to these two. Is to take this. Uh, take this bottom plate off. But because I've already. Uh, had it. This open here. I decided to just go ahead and get it like this. So, but like I said you could just take this bottom piece off. And get it but. Again, like I said, I'm already at the top, so I got it. Get it how I got it. So, uh, oh. got it on. Pull that down. Get this off on the bottom here. I think I'm gonna install it from the top first. This is easier to gain access from the bottom. So I think I'm gonna put the first part up there. Like such. Get my Loctite. Get my Loctite on now. Get in here and uh. Get it in here. Push it on there real good. There we go. I want that real good. Turn it there. Alright. So there's two grub screws going. On. One on each side, so just be aware of that.
like that. Now we're gonna go to the bottom side here. I start with this piece. It's not that hard. Just make it that hard. Sometimes it just don't want to cooperate. But we'll make it cooperate. Get in there, young bud. Alright. Connect that on there. Grub screw. Lock tight on it. Hold it in place. Take this screw in. Boom. Turn it. Alright, get some glove screw. Lock tight. Hold on. Hold on. All right, so we in business. Get all the grub screws in. You can check the ones that was already installed from the factory. Push that tight. Mm -hmm. Go back over mine and make sure that's tight. Boom. Oh. Stay on that. So now all I gotta do is let's put the ESC back in place. Like such. Let's put the motor back in place. Mm -hmm. That way we can go ahead and install the uh get it right there. Get it right. There we go. Before we secure the motor, let's get this piece in. Let's get these two in. Mm -hmm. Get one security in first. Look like that. Get that in there. already set if i'm not mistaken i think it's already set for the exact length so i don't have to adjust it so let's see let's put it on let's see if it's already yep look like it is yep Let's go ahead and put it in. I thought it was uh, adjustable like the other one. It is adjustable, but you have to unscrew the grub screws on each end to uh, adjust it. But I'm thinking it's already automatically uh, adjusted from the factory for the right length. But we're going to find out once I uh, get this grub screw in there and align the motor. Let's see. I think I'm going to have to uh, actually undo the grub screw from the factory. Adjust it. Let's see. So what I do, I'm just gonna leave it loose. I'll get the motor set, and then we'll uh, adjust it from there. So again, it has. Let me turn around so you can see it. So on here, it has two grub screws here. That way, you can adjust that shaft right here in the middle, so you can actually get the right height. I mean, the right height. Get the right length you need to go from the the gear case. So then, uh, in the transfer case. So let's uh, let's get the motor in. Once we get the motor uh, and the gear case set back in place, then we can uh adjust that shaft and uh to where we need it to be Yep. 
I wasn't trying to make this video very long, but I got time lapse. Let me make it speed up a little bit on certain parts. All right, so got that in. Hmm. And I see they didn't put any, that's cool, they didn't put any uh, Loctite on it because they did. We would have an issue getting it out, we have to look, use a little bit of heat. That's if you hadn't already stripped it yet, so. Uh, so that's about the length we need right there. So like I said, once you got the motor, the gearbox in place, it's basically going to set itself. So I'm still going to Loctite both of these rub screws. So we don't have any issues. I'm going to get out there, testing all these stuff rigs on this rig. Loctite that up, bam. Basically, the next thing to do now is just uh, let's put the pins in and uh, put the wheels on. That's what we have to do. And it's no, these are non-directional wheels, so the pattern goes both ways. So it doesn't matter which uh, way we do that. So we're going to do it like this. Got the wheel on. Uh oh. There we go. Uh, get a wheel nut. Make a little lock tight on wheel nut too. But on the stud. Just so we don't have any issues. Which I just don't think we will have any issue with the wheels coming off. This thing, it's not that fast. But you never know. So just play it. Safe, you know. All right. We just played safe. Another pin. Put it in. Now let's put the wheel on. Let's get a nut. Oh, don't sound right, dude. Let's get a nut. Stop it. All right, here we go. Put it in. Boom, boom, boom. Got that on. All right. Now let's go to the other side. Get this all set up. In. Let's get the wheel in. Got the wheel on. A little light tight on stud. Get this in there. Got that one on. Time for the last one. Here we go. Last one. Last one on. A little light tight. all my stock parts away. Never know when you might need them here. Put them all in a bag. Label MN 128. Move y'all over here. Still has some articulation. Just not as much as with the stock shocks. With those friction shocks. But still, the left still have some. All right, so let's put the body on and see what everything looks like. And bam, there you go, guys. The new look for the hard top MEN128 Jeep Wrangler. Man, I'm telling you, that thing look good. It looks good. It looks good. Look at it, look at it, look at it. Nice stance. Very nice stance. But as you see here, I'm thinking it's going to rub there. Let me turn it as it does. Yep, you can see it, it rubs against that. So what we'll have to do, at least cut it across here where it connects to the running board. And that should give it enough clearance. Uh, for turning. Because it doesn't hit the running board here. And maybe when it flexes. Maybe. But I don't think so. So we'll cut across that way. And the back is fine. I mean. 
back is fine doesn't rub even when it articulates all the way up it doesn't hit anything let's see on this side here same thing here so we're just gonna have to uh cut like i said again just cut it across there where it meets the uh running board there the back is fine i mean it yep back is gonna be fine so yep Front may not be fine there when it flexes up like that it's a little like it hits up against that but i don't think it'll flex that much in a way when it does flex that much you're going very slow so it should be no problem and i don't want to cut that because that's part of the light and you actually can put a working light in here so uh which that could be the next upgrade